We're talking about the prophets, David's in the season that I believe that is for the church. We're going for Zechariah today, and I would love you to write down 12 groups of scriptures and uh, go and look into it, what the Holy Spirit is saying to you through that. Amen? I believe it's prophetic word for this season, for me and for you. Okay, we're going to start with Zechariah 1, verse 3 and 16. Verse 3 saying, this is what the Lord Almighty says, Return to me, declares the Lord Almighty, and I will return to you. Return to me, declares the Lord Almighty, and I will return to you. The God just leave. Well, when you are doing the wrong, will he just dump you, leave you? No. But you know, if you can, I can show it in an example. It's like God's hand is on you. But God cannot walk into the sin with you. So his hand will be there, but he's turned away in this way. And he says, return to me so that I can return to you for intimate relationship. He will never leave you, never forsake you. His hand will be there. His hand will be there. But it cannot go with an intimate relationship with you into that. Into the fear. I'm not talking about adultery. I'm not talking about pornography. I'm not talking about, yes, all of that also. But I'm talking about you going with an intimate relationship with stress or fear or anxiety or performance or depression or negativity or judgment or religion. You go with that, with fake. You go with that. His hand will be on you because God is faithful, even if we are unfaithful. But this is not his heart. This is not his dream. He says, return to me so that I can return to you. So that I can have a relationship with you, intimate relationship with you. Because I cannot go with you into that sin. Are you with me? When we look at, look at the book Zechariah, we see a lot of prophecies about Christ. The book Isaiah and Zechariah, two books with a lot of prophecies about Christ and how in, in the four Gospels you will find that Jesus did this and he did that and it's, it will be stated to fulfill the word, to fulfill the prophecy at it, as it was prophesied. So now it's fulfilled. A lot of those scriptures was prophecies from Zechariah and from Isaiah. So when we look at this, I will put one name, one word over everything, and then we'll say productivity. You can write there productivity. My brother, my sister, you can be productive when the business can grow, when the finances, finances and creativity is just flowing. That is not necessarily productivity according to God. Productivity according to God is when you are successful in doing His will to fulfill to fulfill his purposes. To work with God in his dream. For his, with his agenda. That is productivity. Obeying God. That is productivity. I mean God said for Jer to Jeremiah. I'm sending you to these people. They're not going to listen to you. Does that mean he's not going to be productive? No he's going to be productive. Jeremiah was very productive. He did what God asked him to do. That is productivity. Are you with me? Success is not that the fact that everybody listened to him. No. When you look at Jeremiah, you say he was unsuccessful. No. Success is to do exactly what God has taught you to do. Productivity is that you will stay accurate with him. So when you look at this book, in this season, I, the word that came in my heart was Productivity. Productivity is, first of all, to return to God so that he can return to you so that you can have an awesome, awesome walk and do what he has called you to do together. Amen? Verse 16 says, Therefore, this is what the Lord says, I will return to Jerusalem with mercy. That is God's practical help. Mercy is God's practical help. And there my house will be rebuilt. And there, we will get back to my agenda. 
You return to me, I will return to you, and then we will go, and I will come with my practical help to you, and we will build my house. We will get back, I want to say, into business with my agenda, and that is to build my house. Because my house, you are my house. Each one of us, that's the dream house for the Father. You have your dream house, it's a dream house for the Father. That's you and me. May God want to live among the nations. So when we talk about productivity, when we talk about success, it's God says, come into my agenda for the success that I will have. Come and have the success with me. Come and be productive with me for your life. Amen. That we can focus on our house. We can focus on my situation, my issue, my this, my that. Yes, there's a life where I need to understand. Greatest commandment, two sides of the coin. Love the Lord your God and then love yourself so that you can love your neighbor with the love that you have for yourself that comes from God. I mean, so that, that put that there, that's true. But there's a selfish way of living where it's not driven by his love, but we are driven by his energy, his motivation, that is called love, to do what? To do everything with him, with him, with him. And when we go with him and follow him and do and go according to his agenda, we call that productivity, we call that success. Amen. That's the first one. Chapter 1, verse 3 and 16. Next one. Chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Actually, verse 5 also. What is God saying? I will be a wall of fire around you. So as you turn to me and I return to you, and we're going to do this together, and we're going to build my house. For that whole process, I will bring a wall of fire around you. For what? So that the enemy cannot come in. He wants to come close to you. He will get burnt. Oh. Oh. Are you with me? He tries to touch you. There will be damage to him. Whatever can come and try to come against you, God says, I want to protect you for the process that we're going into. Amen. Not you allowing destructive fire to surround you and destroy you. But God is a consuming fire that with a wall of fire, he wants to put that hedge, that protection around you so that the enemy... He will be burned, but you will be purified. He will be burned, but you will be purified. In that fire, he is lame. In that fire, his authority is stripped. But in that fire, you are rising with beauty. Amen. So, verse 10. Shout and be glad, for I am coming, and I will live among you. That's God's agenda. Shout and be glad. Anybody wants to shout? Yeah. I thought the Lord would shout like that, yes. Most probably that's what he wanted from you, to shout like that, at least for the rest, a little bit shy <clears throat> to do what God asked. Um, shout and be glad, for I'm coming and I will live among you. God is excited to come to you. He says, be in the same state that I am. Have the same heart. Have the same heart. He will not expect of you to be excited, but he is not excited at all about coming to live with you. <laughs> no. He commands you to be excited because he's excited. And say, we're going to enjoy this together. So get your heart in the right place. Get your emotions in the right place. We know easily within a second or two how to feel depressed or how to feel frustrated or how to feel fed up or how to feel all this other stuff. We can do that immediately. But how to shout unto the Lord how to be glad in Him. Many times it's just this major choice that I need to make. God says, make that choice to have the energy that I have. Make that choice to have the perspective that I have. Make that choice to be excited about what I am excited about. Be excited about the same things that I'm excited about. Amen. And that is that we will live together. 
that we will live together. I'm coming and I will live among you, declares the Lord. Many nations will be joined. In many nations, many nations will be joined with the Lord in that day and will become my people. I will live among you and I will live among you. That's my desire. They will join so that they are saved from hell, so that they will miss hell. No, that's not the essence. That's not the essence. The essence is so that we can live together. So that you can be with me and I can be with you. So that we can live this dream that I have. Amen. That's number two. Number three is chapter three, verse seven. This is what the Lord Almighty says. If you will walk in obedience to me and keep my requirements, then you will govern my house and will take have charge of my courts, and I will give you a place among these standing here. It's still about his house. If you return to me and I return then to you, and we're going to look at my house that will be built for us to dwell together. If you are then walking in that excitement that I have about building this house, excitement to be with you, that you are excited to be with me, then I will give you authority. And I will, you will have a place among these standing here. You will have an open heaven. You will have an open heaven. The resources from heaven will be available to you. If you walk in the pattern of obedience, you put your life in the discipline of obedience. Discipline of obedience is many times that you will do something that you, your flesh doesn't want to do. I don't want to do. Okay, in the beginning. Later, more and more, you will want to do it. If you let your flesh just run around with you, yes, you are free. You are free. You are free to do His will. You are free to do whatever you want. But in the beginning, put that discipline on the flesh that was running around wild. That you decide that you can think whatever you want. You give yourself the liberty to think whatever you want. You cannot have that. If you say you're following Christ, if you say you're returning to Him, if the inside here will be His home, then it's you, because you respect Him and you're going into His agenda, you want to be productive, you want to be successful, then you choose not to think what you want. You even choose the emotions. Be honest about the emotions. Okay, whatever the enemy in hell wants to give you as emotions also. Just be honest and honor it. No, no, you're not. This is not your home. This is not a home for depression. This is not a, this is not a home for, for stress and anxiety and all these things and, and easily uh, oversensitive, easily feel rejected because he didn't greet me or I was in trouble again because I did this wrong or I did that wrong. Oh, poor me. And all hell says, yes, poor you. But they don't say, oh, they laugh at you. Get behind me, Satan. I'm going with God's agenda. Amen. By His grace, only by His grace. That other scripture that said, oh, you will come with mercy. You will come with practical help. If you allow Him, He will help you. But you ask for His help for what? He's ready to help you. But if you're not going with God's agenda, Holy Spirit is only going to help you to get into God's agenda because Holy Spirit is faithful in the Trinity to the mandate that the Father has. So you want this practical help, then He will help you to get into the agenda that Father has for you. Are you with me? Next one, number four. Chapter four, verse six and seven. A lot of you guys know that scripture. Not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. What are you, mighty mountain? You will become level ground. You will become level ground. With the shouts of God bless it, God bless it. In the other context of a lot of translations, talking about grace, grace. God bless it means God enables it. God bless you with his enablement. God bless you with all the resources that you need. That's God bless it. For what? 
Not by power, nor by might to do what? To run with his agenda. Oh, we can be very sincere, but sincerely wrong. I can be very sincere, but in that sincerity, we can deceive ourselves and think we are justified in what we do. You can write that there. You are not justified because you are sincere. Even though you are sincere, you can be sincerely wrong. Suicide bomber, sincere, but sincerely wrong. Giving his life as a sacrifice. But really wrong. And you can be a suicide bomber with what? With how, what you say, with how you destroy yourself, with your words in your heart. When, what you say in your heart. How many times in Scripture you say, and he said in his heart. You choose to say whatever you want in your heart, but you are destroying what's in here then. And then you, you are, when you put it on your lips, you can destroy what others, the others around you. But you can entertain the fight with that person. You can entertain and think you are sincere and in that sincerity, totally deceived. Why? Why will you waste the excellence that God has placed in you? Don't waste the excellence, the gold, the preciousness, that's inside of you. Hello. Go with the value that you have. You look at the cross and then you understand your value. Amen. Not by power nor by my might, but by my spirit. Go with a with a enablement from the spirit. Go with the power, with the strength of the Holy Spirit, because He will be faithful to my agenda. He will make you productive. He will give you success according to Father's definition of success. Amen. And with that, you stand before the mountain and you say, what are you? Who are you? How dare you? <laughs> How dare you think you can stand in my way to do the Father's will? How dare you think you can stand in the way? Don't you understand? Do you not see that it's me and the Father? It's me and God. We are partners in this. I chose to be partners with Him. Amen. How dare you? Who are you? And that who are you is not necessarily, it's not a person, it's that haha -ha that wants to lead that person. So you're standing because our, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the evil spirits, principalities. So who are you? Principality, evil spirit. Okay. So that's why it's when it says, what, what are you, this mountain? It's talking about all these things that the enemy can throw at you and make this, this heap of rubbish and you feel, ish, how will I get over that? You become a plank. You become a level for me to walk over you. Walk over that whatever intimidation that the enemy wants to throw at you. Walk over that fear. Walk over that stress. Walk over that anxiety. Walk over that negativity. Walk over that right to say and to think whatever you want to, like a loose cannon here in your heart, to say whatever you want to. That's dangerous. Next one, point number five, is still chapter four, verse nine and ten. The hands of this man that laid the foundation of this temple, his hands will also complete it. Then you will know the Lord God has, Almighty has sent me to you. Who dares despise the day of small things, of small beginnings? If you're going with God's agenda, how dare you think it will not work? How dare you think, but you don't have enough? How dare you think that five loaves of bread and two fish is not good enough? It's not enough. How dare you think that? Maybe only two people out of the 5,000 looked at them and said, are oh, they totally crazy? Giving God five loaves of bread and two fish. He asked them to find food for us 5,000 men. I don't know how many women and children were also there. How do they think that they can give the master the five loaves of bread and two fish? That's like an insult, man. Are you with me? 
How dare you despise the small things that in sincerity with the honor and humility in worship that you give God. Don't despise it. Don't despise the greatness of your God by looking just at that small thing. By you choosing that right attitude tomorrow. By you doing that something tomorrow as if unto the Lord. By you serving that person. By you being sensitive in the spirit, in the spirit and just send this SMS to somebody to encourage him. Don't despise that. That could be a major, 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 major key for what God wants to do. But the hands that laid the foundation, God that started to work in you, you will complete it. But, why does he say that? It's Sarah Babel. He says to that guy, what you started, you will finish it. Because I'm a God that what I start, I will finish it. I will complete it. It will be successful. It will accomplish what I sent it for. My word. So you work with the word. What you start, you will finish it. Because my word will not return empty to me. Isaiah 55. But it will fulfill the purpose that I send it for. So you work with the will of God. You work with the word of God. What you start with your hands, you will complete it. Amen. We're talking about productivity and success. Next one. Next point. I think that's number six. Chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. Verse 12 and 13. Tell him, this is what the Lord Almighty says, here is the man. God presents the man, the role model, the heart of the Father, the perfect one, Jesus Christ. Here is the man, this is prophecy, whose name is the branch. From him everything will come. And he will branch out from his place and build the temple. What again? What again? He will build the temple of the Lord. He will build the temple of the Lord. Whose temple? The Father's home. Our Father's home. Yes, Jesus will build. You build with him. He will build. He will come. And he asks, who am I? You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes, on that revelation. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not stand against it. The gates of hell cannot stand against you when you are in God's agenda. You will not shake the gates. You will not have a fight with the gates and all the things that is keeping this, that, those gates together. But so many times we are fighting with closed gates. But maybe it's a gate that God will never open. Or maybe it's a gate that in the name of performance, in the name of religion, in the name of your own strength, not by power nor by might, but by my spirit. <coughs> but by your might and by, yours, by your power, not demonic power, but your own strength. With a sincere heart, you will stand at that gate and the gate will not, will not fall. Whatever the enemy can bring against you, it will not overcome you. It will not overtake you. Are you with me? God will build his church. Jesus Christ. And you know, the temple of the Lord, that's where he will dwell. That's his dream. That's me and you. Now Christ says, I will build my church. And then he gives the church to say, Father, let this be your home. I've built the church. I've built the church with my partners, co-workers with me, co-workers with me, Jesus Christ. I present to you the church. Let it be your home. And you know, the father goes and says, yes, let it be my home. But this church that you've built, let it be your bride. Wow. Because the father is involved. The father is involved with us right here where we are. It was the Father that gave the revelation to Peter when he said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. When Jesus said to Peter, you are blessed because flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father in heaven. Father God is involved with you. And he's giving you revelations without many times you knowing it. And you can ignore the revelations because it came to you too natural. In a too na natural way. 
If I can say like that. It's your choice. Father will present the church as the bride. Jesus will present the church as the Father's home. God is awesome. Amen. Here is the man. Remember the, the Amplified that says, Behold the man. Look at the man. Watch the man. Keep inside the man. You remember? Behold the man has to do with worship. You wow about the man. Behold the man. Look at the man. Understand the reality that he's there. Look at the man. Many people looked at him, but for the rest they didn't understand anything about him. Look at the man. Realize he always is there. Watch the man. Why? Give attention. That watch is give, give attention because suddenly he can move. Suddenly. Watch. Watch. Give focus. Put energy in. Give attention. Watch the man. And then keep in sight. Whatever you go through, make sure that you keep him in sight. When you don't understand, when you... It's not for you always to understand. But in the place where you don't understand that you still can see him. It's not for you first to understand everything. It's for you to keep in sight the man who's building his father's home. Amen. And just go where he is. If you understand what he's doing or not, and do it with him. Amen. That's chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. Next one. Chapter 8, verse 3, 8, 9, and 13. Chapter 8, verse 3. This is what the Lord says. I will return to Zion and dwell in Jerusalem. I will return to Zion. Zion is the place where God is honored and only Him honored. The place where he is praised. In your emotions, in your thoughts, in your, in your whole life, in your faithfulness, in how you stand as you sit, as you take notes. Now why? Because you love the word. So you will not just be arrogant and wara, wara, wara. You want to take it in. I'm not saying you're arrogant if you don't take notes. I'm just saying, I've asked you 375 times. Please. Take it. In your heart. I will bring them back. They will be my people. And I will be faithful and righteous to them as their God. That's chapter 8. Ah, verse 8. 9. Let your hands be strong so that the temple may be built. Let your hands be strong. Hear these words. Let your hands be strong so that the temple may be built. Let your hands be strong, you will be productive, you will be successful if you stay with my agenda. And let us build my house, let us build my home. With what you say, with what you do. What you say, God must be welcoming it. What you do, how you reason with somebody. God must be welcome. Amen? Are you with me? Verse 13. I will save you, and you will be a blessing. God saved me to be a blessing. Let's say that. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Do not be afraid, but let your hands be strong. Do not be afraid, but let your hands be strong. Don't fear that you will not be successful. Don't fear that you will not be productive. Don't fear that you will fail. Don't fear, but let your hands be strong to do the work that I've called you to do. Don't fear to leave certain things behind and to do what I've asked you to do. Because the righteous will walk by faith. God is pleased by faith. Amen. So many things that he will ask of you will be by faith. By faith you will see him, not by sight. Many times by faith. But by faith you follow him. He is honored when you do that by faith. Amen. Are you with me? Okay, let's leave that there. Next one. 
chapter 8, verse 16. These are the things. These are the things you are to do. Speak the truth to each other and render true and sound judgment in your courts. You suppose, my brother, to speak truth, first of all, in your heart. You can wara wara in your heart. You can entertain that depression. You can entertain that negativity. You can justify why you will not give attention. You will justify why you are busy with some other things. Then why the heaven that you come? <laughs> not why the hell. <laughs> if you're in any case sitting here to learn how to ignore what Holy Spirit wants to do and just go on your own mission. Then you go out, when you go out here, you've trained at least yourself to do your own thing. The time alone with God, yes, please go and have it. But when we are together, there's corporate anointing for a specific purpose. But we talked about that, how that crazy army where there's, even at that moment, there's a group that must work, that must go together to a certain place to build something together. That they cannot, because the workers are only in some other spiritual thing, doing their own thing, reading their own thing, going on their own thing. And you lean, learning, you, you are teaching yourself that. How just to entertain your own thing. So that out there you will build your own thing. Where do we do that when we are together with the Word? Where God says, be together. Don't. Oh, we need the only language about income for same me. Give me that in English. Don't forsake the gathering of the saints. For what? The gathering of the saints, so that you can just sit here. Why are you here? Because God said we are together as a group. Why are you here? Because you respect God. Why are you here? Because He's the nicest worship, and sometimes you can take a lack of thing about the word. No. You are here because God said, and because you respect the word, that you will not forsake the gathering of the saints. Why? Because you are together in a certain way. God wants to be with you, but in a certain way. But don't be together as his house, not the physical building. Don't be together as his house if you're not prepared to have good manners. And just to sit and entertain whatever you want to do. There's a few that need to repent now, but I believe you repented in Jesus' name. A few leaders also. Hallelujah. <sighs> Verse 8b. That means the second part. I will bring them back to live in Jerusalem. They will be my people, and I will be faithful and righteous to them as their God. No, I'm not with that one anymore. Hey, We were... Verse 16... Speak the truth to each other. When last did you speak the word to your brother and your sister? Oh, when I feel offended or when I feel something, I'm very easy. It's not like I choose to speak to you. When there's an opening, I speak to you about certain things, whatever I feel in my heart. And some of it is good. But how naturally is it just nice to speak about the word? When last, just because you love the word. Because you enjoy the word. You speak about the word. Not to preach to the other guy. And tell him how wrong he is. No. But just to speak about the word. Let's get into that place. Speak the truth to each other. Because that's the way we build. We build. We build his house. Also as we speak to one another. The truth. And truth is not Honesty. To be honest about something. I speak to you the truth. This is really what I feel. No, it's not necessarily the truth. That's honesty, where you bring something in the light. And then you need to allow the truth to set you free from whatever you go through. And so that you are not deceived. Know the difference between honesty and truth. Only the child of God can know that because only the, through the Holy Spirit you can speak truth. That can change people and change your own life. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Verse 21. Inhabitants will go of one city will go to the other. Guys from the one city will go to the other. 
and say, say, let us go at once to entreat the Lord and seek the Lord. I myself am going. That you can say, do what I'm doing. Do what I'm going to do. And that's the passion in your heart that you're going to do. And you want them to do that also. Because in your doing, there will always be a seeking. There will always be a seeking of more of Him. Too many times in the seeking, we have the presence of frustration and irritation. Instead of the presence of an expectation. Expectation. Not just frustration and irritation, but expectation that God's going to be there. Have it by faith. I pray that you will have that expectation as you seek Him. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Verse 22. Where are we? Hallelujah. And many peoples, many people, many, 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 and powerful nations, big nations, powerful nations, will come to seek the Lord and to entreat Him. Entreat Him is, I come with supplication. Is that the word? Met, um, smirken. Not with moaning and groaning. Ek smirk jou. That's not about the moaning and the groaning. That is to have a focus, a serious, intense focus in your prayer. It's not just doing some other thing that you, that you pray. But there's intensity in your prayer. Come to seek Him. That means to focus on Him, to desire to see more of Him. The man, the man, the man who's building. And you're building with Him so that you can be productive and successful. Last 123, last part. Let us go with you. Why? That's what they will say. Let us go with you. Because we have heard that God is with you. May that be your testimony. My brother, my sister. Not the fact that ooh, all these things work out and all those things work out. And oh, you are so 100% accurate. Oh, you are so just so wonderful in the way that you speak. Oh, you are so wonderful in this and this and this. No. But because... We can see that God is with you. And we want to go where God is. Not because you have all the answers. Not because you have hair or no hair. I know. But because we've heard. So let it be so for you. When people look at you, they want to go with you. Because that's the testimony of your life. They can see that God is with you. Next one. You are still here. Chapter 9. Now here I just want to give three examples of prophecy given through this man. Chapter 9 verse 9. So many people, even when Jesus stood before them, they couldn't see it. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, see. Rejoice, shout, see. Your king comes to you righteous and victorious, lowly. That's with humility and riding on a donkey. Oh man, did that not happen? Come on. Your king is coming to you in humility, but righteous, perfect king. Riding on a donkey. That's exactly what happened. So God wants to come to you, but many times, yes, he will come with humility. He will not force himself on you. That's too many times when we were young, I see with myself and my son and whatever, only when there's like force being used in the voice and this and this and this, then things happen. But in humility, authority, but with humility. God wants to come to you and he wants to speak to you. But many times in a way that he would come that you don't expect. You don't expect him to come on a donkey. Hello? But through circumstances, he wants to come. Riding on that circumstances. Riding on that situation. He wants to come to you. Can you honor him in the midst of the presence of the donkey? But what will you see? You see the donkey and then you decide who's riding on him. Hello? 
because he's riding on a donkey, most probably he's this type of person. Maybe he's that type of person. <sighs> Don't first look at the donkey, please. <laughs> Honor the king. Chapter 11, verse 13. And the Lord said to me, throw it to the potter. What? All that money. 30 pieces of silver. Throw it to the potter. The handsome price. The wonderful price. At which they value me. Valued me. So I took the 30 pieces of silver and threw them to the potter at the house of the Lord. Ah, oh, come on, man. That's prophecy. You remember? Quite a lot of hundred years later. Exactly. That's what happened. That's how much, how they valued me. Cheap. They saw me as cheap. Because God, yes, made Jesus sin. He made him cheap so that we can realize how valuable we are. Oh, the Father made Jesus cheap by making him sin with judgment on that sin so that we can realize how valuable we are. This handsome price at which they valued me. But God determined your value. That's awesome. Amen. The last one of that point was chapter 13, verse 7. Awake, sword against my shepherd, against the man who is close to me. That's the son that is close to the father. The sword come. What's the sword? The word of God. God bring the word against his shepherd, Jesus Christ. And the word is that he will be slain. He will be slain. And he had to bring that word on Jesus Christ, the shepherd. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. That's exactly what happened when they came in the garden of Gethsemane. Remember? And the sheep scattered. And then once again, according to the gospel, this is to fulfill what was prophesied. This was to fulfill according to the word. My brother, my sister, if you could work with the word of God over your life, if you could work with the word of God, so many times you will see how the word will be fulfilled all around you. And you will understand success. You will understand productivity. The more you work with the word, because you know the word, you eat the word. When you eat the word, you will understand productivity. And the word will be fulfilled. And the heart and the dream that Father has for you will be fulfilled. You will walk it out. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Okay, the next point will be. Where are we now? Chapter 12, verse 10. And I, the Lord will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me, the one they pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. God will pour out the spirit of grace his spirit of enablement. That means he will enable you through his spirit. Not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit. He will pour out spirit of grace and supplication. So that what? So that you are enabled through the spirit to do what God wants you to do. And supplication. That is that intense, focused prayer. That's effective prayer in the right direction. Not Moaning and groaning, not wasting your time in speaking to God, but focused prayer in the right directions so that success can happen. You can be successful. A spirit of grace and supplication, they will look on me. They will be able, then you, because God enables you through grace, and God gives you the spirit to guide you 
in focused prayer because you understand how to pray with the Spirit under the guidance of the Spirit and you are enabled by grace, then what? You will be able to look at Him. Then you will, the first thing, you will be able to look at Him. They will look on me, the one they pierced, and there will be a genuine repentance. That's even on the day of Pentecost. What happened? Hey, are you with me? When Peter told them, the one that you've pierced, the one that you crucified, they saw that. And immediately the 3,000, then the 5,000, let's talk about, and then the multitude. It just happened. And then the persecution in Jerusalem, so that they can do what God has called them to do, and that is to go. And wherever they went, they preached the gospel, and people came to repentance. Churches were planted. God's going to help us. Chapter 13, a few verses. There's one. On that day, a fountain will be opened to the house of David and the inhabitants to cleanse them from sin and impurity. There's a fountain available to you to cleanse you from sin and impurity. It can happen. It, it must happen for us. Through the Spirit, you can be cleansed. And the Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit is there also to cleanse you from sin and impurity. Verse 9b. I will put a fire, I will refine them like silver and test them like gold. They will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say, they are my people. They will say, the Lord is our God. So when God says, they are my people, you say? God says, they are my people. You say? God says, I identify with them. I will protect them. They are precious to me. I'm serious about them. They are my people. They are my children. And then God says, if the, through the Spirit you will live, you will respond with respect. And you'll say, that's my Lord. That's my God. You will know how to respond to God with respect, with honor. If you understand the awesome value that he's putting on you and how valuable you are to him, how he sees you as precious. And to say, they are mine. They are mine. I bought them with a price. I gave my everything. And in the light of his grace, in the light of his love, in the light of who he is with you and how he's dealing with you, you will say, he's my God. He's my Lord. No one else will have the final say in my life. Only he. Not what I go through will have the final say, but he alone will have the final say. Ah, men, let's go with that, men. You with me? Verse 9, second part. Will I go with that? Orara, chapter 14. Oh. 9b, no. They will call on my name. I said that already. Chapter 14, verse 8, the beginning. Verse 8. On that day, living water will flow out. Verse 1 was, yes, fountain will be opened of chapter 13. Chapter 14, verse 8. Living water will flow from Jerusalem. Will flow. It will flow. It will flow. Freshness will flow from you. Freshness will flow from you. And what will flow to, through you will not be the water of bitterness. It will not be contaminated. It will not make other people sick and bring them in bad attitudes or into whatever negativity. Because what is coming from you when you walk this road from the first part where it says, return to me and I will return to you. And I want to be, because I want to dwell with you. I want to be permanently with you. Hello? When you walk with that, when we talk then further, what will come forth from you will be fresh. It will give life. Words of life. The word says, Proverbs 18, 21, life and death in the power of the tongue. You choose how you will use it. That means, my brother, you can, there is not a thing of you will speak life and then you speak nothing. You will just speak. No. 
It's either going to be life or death. There's not the in-between. So if you don't speak life under the guidance of the Spirit, you are speaking death. And the problem is, the first place where you speak is in your heart. And he said in his heart. Many times, even in the Old Testament, there were judgment on somebody, or his destiny were cut short because he said in his heart. That's the danger that we think today we can just say and say whatever in our hearts. In your heart. And you must just guard what is coming from your mouth. Oh, sorry. Guard your heart more than anything else. Because from your heart are the springs of life. And it, your, your mouth is just the overflow of what is in your heart. Guard your heart more than anything else. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let him be your awesome treasure. Let his words be your awesome treasure. Let it not be that how you feel is more valuable than the word of God. When you find yourself speaking your opinion, speaking the negativity, speaking what you, your frustration, speaking because you need to be honest. Yes, wonderful. You need to be honest. But now you decide if you honor the truth or just to honor the fact of what you want to say, you can say that. Yes, you say, I can say what I want to say because I must be honest. I must not be a fake. Fake has to do with the opposite of truth. Fake is not that you are just not honest. Uh, hello, are you with me? But in all honesty, you cannot just say what you want to. Because what you say is either going to be life or death. You are honest, but then, when in all honesty, saying what you, how you feel, and that is actually these words of death and destruction in how you feel, then make sure you, you cover it, and not, not cover up, but the final say will be with truth. You wipe it off the table. See, these rubbish will not have the final say in my life. Be honest, but then don't stop there. Make sure you honor Jesus Christ, who is the truth. But if you want to bring Jesus Christ into that situation, behold the man, look at the man, keep inside the man, watch the man. If you want him to be there, you better speak truth. Like the word says, speak to one another the truth. But speak in your heart. That's where it starts. Because this is overflow. This is overflow. Are you with me? What is linked with hell, first of all? Your words coming from your heart. Because, yeah, this tongue is confirming that this tongue is lit up from hell. And the fire from hell, you will speak. You will speak the fire from hell over people and into situations. Or you will speak through the Holy Spirit. That's the consuming fire. Consuming all the rubbish that wanted to destroy you and others around you. Speak. According to the fire of God over this nation, over the situations, over COVID, over situation, over whoever you are even frustrated and irritated with. You are frustrated? So speak with all the demons from hell, the destructive fire of words of destruction over that person. Hello? And the devil don't even have to <laughs> be involved. You will do his work and destroy that person. With your words. You don't even have to call the fire from hell. Because you will call it. Not anymore in Jesus name. The church is going to rise up. The church is going to rise up. You're going to rise up. In your families. In your relationships. In your future. In your feelings. In the words from your heart. You will not allow. In this palace of the Holy Spirit. The temple of the Holy Spirit. You will not allow any rubbish. To be there and to speak. You will not allow that thought to become a voice. You keep that f thoughts. When it comes through, it comes through, no problem. But then you take that thought into captivity. <laughs> you, what's the nice word for shut up? I don't know. Be still. No, I don't know. You take the thought, where the hell do you come from? Oh, sorry, yes, from hell. This is not a home. You take that and you throw it out. 
You take that and you throw it out. This is a palace. Are you with me? Those rabbis will not steal your destiny. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Last one, chapter 14, verse 9, 16, and 20. Okay, verse 9. The Lord will be king over the whole earth. Amen. Amen. There will be one God. That's it. Verse 16. They will go up year after year to worship the king, the Lord Almighty. Amen. 20a, on that day, holy to the Lord, will be inscribed on the bells, etc., etc., etc. And then once again, it will be holy unto the Lord God Almighty, verse 21. Holy to the Lord is you are set aside for him, set aside for him, and him alone. He will be king, and there will be one name, and it is his name. You will be king, and he, no, sorry, <laughs> he will be king, and, hello? Yes, you will be a king under the king of kings. But he will be lifted high and it will be all about one name, Jesus Christ. It will be all about one name. And that is the name Jesus Christ. In what you do, you do it in some other name. Some other spirit, there will be communion. It will be you and the Holy Spirit. Or it will be you and some other spirit. But your thoughts, your speaking in your heart will be a conversation with someone. It will be because of a conversation with someone. Spirit to spirit. Deep cry out to deep. There will always be a connection. God made you that your spirit is hungry for communion, for relationship. So there will always be spirit speaking to spirit. So your spirit will respond and hear what? Hopefully, the Holy Spirit. But if not, you allow that dynamic, your soul will speak to something. Are you with me? And there will be some other spirit speaking to you. God's spirit or a demonic spirit. You make that choice. But if it's a demonic spirit, it has one agenda. To break down what God is building. To destroy what he is doing. Don't allow destruction in you. Don't let the thoughts become a voice so that you can respond to that voice and say, and he said in his heart who the person. That Rabbi Shocha can say something in you. And then you say, oh, sorry. You can go. You can go. Revelation 3.20, I finish with that. See, see, see. How many times the prophets say, see, See, what does that mean? You're not just seeing. To see is one thing. But there's a seeing that you need to understand, where it has to do with the understand, with the going beyond. It's an insight, not a sight. It's, there must be an insight that must explode in you that will bring the freedom. The insight. See, I stand at the door and knock. How do you see that? How can I see that he stands at the door and knock on the other side? How can I see that? You see by faith. You have insight. Naturally, you cannot see that. He will not just open the door and come in. He wants to be honored. And the way he's honored is when you respond by faith. That's when he's honored by you. So see by faith. I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. I'm knocking. If you hear my voice, not if you hear the knock. Too many times when there's doors, there's doors in your life, when you hear the knock, you open. You open doors and things that you think it's God's opportunities and it's nice ideas. And, all right, even the temptations. When you hear the knock, you open. No. When you hear the knock, you need to hear the voice. Whose voice is on the other side? You will not understand his voice if you don't know his word. Because you don't know the vocabulary. You don't know the language. You cannot speak Chinese. Then you cannot hear the Chinese what he is saying. Is it a Chinese devil or is it a... Yeah. Jesus speaking Chinese. Are you with me? You come to know the word. 
so that you can recognize his voice. How many times he knocked at the door of your heart, but because you couldn't recognize the voice, you never had that time with him. Not just to have time, sometimes just to have time, but time where he wants to speak to you of how life can become so simple if you stay with what he has for you. Simplicity, the more you know the word, the more simple life can get. Where you just can simply believe it because the word is dwelling richly in you and through the word you have faith. Through the word you have faith. Like a child you will enter the kingdom. Matthew 18. Like a child you will enter the kingdom because there's a simplicity in you. With that simplicity you can enter. But you know when you have all the other voices, life can be so complex. When you allow all those other stuff, it can be so complex. And when you must make the right decision, it's even worse. Because now you must find his voice among all. But even if it's so intense in the beginning, even there's a lot of frustrations, whatever, push through. Because the more you're going to honor his voice, the less the other voices will be able to speak. So many times it will still be there, but it will be like, you will hear those words, but you, you don't, you, the more you ignore it, the more it will just be a, a mumbling. But if you are so in the flesh and you allow all the other voices of your frustrations and negativity or depression or this or that or that or focusing on yourself, you allow, you get such a clarity in what the enemy is saying that what the Holy Spirit is saying is like, and you don't know what God is doing. So you still honor his word. Just read his word. If you understand his word or not. If you feel like, just, just, just read his word. Even if it's boring, read his word because your spirit is hungry for. If your soul finds it boring, if your emotions find it boring, choose that your emotions and your soul will not be king. Demanding certain responses. Choose that God will be your king. And then read his word. Because your spirit's been fed. Your spirit's going to become stronger. And suddenly more and more, you will hear from your spirit what God is saying. And it will not be, thus saith the Lord, necessary. It will be so shocking how in a natural way, his guidance will be there. Sometimes that you don't even realize, but this is God. The shaky thing is, many times we don't realize this is a demon speaking. That's the only problem. But you get into the word, you are safe. You get into the word in this place, you are safe. In this place called the word of God. And you dive into the word and let the word dwell richly in you. The word is alive in you. When you give that more and more, you have the capacity to ignore. To give those other voices a flat ignore. It's easier and easier and easier and easier. Because when you're in the Word, you have the armor of God. Everything. Helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the Spirit, the shield of faith. Because of the Word, she was ready with the gospel, belt of truth, everything, everything, everything about the Word. The devil comes close to you, you must go. Because it's the Word. He cannot stand against the Word of God. You cannot fight against the word of God. You can do nothing against the word of God. The word of God is going to fall. The word of God says you will bow and you will burn forever. The devil. So you make sure you are in the word and you will stand. You will stand for that what God has for you. Thank you, Father. We can love you. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will impart, impart, impart the agenda of the Father in our hearts as we open up your word, as we Choose to take time with your word so that we will understand the voice behind the knock. That we will hear the voice behind the closed door and not open any door to come into our lives. Not open any door to come into our circumstances, our desires, our dreams, our strategies. That we will come to know the voice on the other side of the door. Please, Lord, we need your grace for that. So that our productivity, our success will be found in you through your enablement, your grace. 
to have the honor to work with you, Jesus Christ. To have the honor to work with you to build a home for our Father. To have the honor, Father, to be the church, to, present, to be presented as the bride, eternal bride, for Jesus Christ, your Son. Thank you for that honor. Thank you for the honor, Holy Spirit, that you call us your temple and that you are committed to stay in our lives with the agenda of the Father. We thank you for that, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and I pray that you will arrest every man and woman here in this place to walk with, those, with that specific grace. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.